In this video, I will compare two 8-inch, 20-centimeter telescopes. Uh, one of them is a Newtonian to the right, and the other one is a schmidt cassegrain to the left. Uh, Newtonian is a Skywatcher, 200p, and uh, uh, schmidt cassegrain is a Mead LX200 8-inch classic. The Skywatcher 200p Newtonian has a diameter of 200 millimeter for the mirror and a focal length of 1000 so the F ratio which is the F divided by D uh, creates the focal ratio of 5. The Schmidt cassegrain has a diameter of 203.2 millimeter and focal length is 2000 almost F 10, a focal ratio of 10. Both of them are now looking at the moon and let's see how the view looks like through each. First through the 8 inch Sky Watcher Newtonian. This is the view through the Sky Watcher Newtonian. As you can see, uh, the field of view is about uh, yeah, four times or three times, three and a half times the size of the full moon. Full moon is around, um, or diameter of the moon is around one, half a degree, sorry, half a degree. And that makes the image uh, widths from one corner, which you can see to the right, to the other corner, around one and a half degree to two degrees. And so it's, it's quite wide field for the viewing so that was a view to the uh, Star Watcher 200p and the same eyepiece 28 millimeter now let's see to the 28 millimeter and the Schmidt Cassegrain let's see the view What is immediately you notice is that the image is uh, bigger. It has a narrower field of view, so finding the object without the uh, use of a finder scope is almost very difficult or impossible, probably. In the narrow field of view can be a problem, but it's perfect for planetary bodies like the moon and uh, other planets. As you can see, you can see more details here. So, another difference between the Newtonian and the Schmidt Kessling is that the position of the eyepiece as the targets uh, is in different parts of the sky will change. So you have to bring it down or up and that means you have to change your sitting position also, either sit or rise. So it's, it's not very easy in that sense, it's better to be able to have something which is a stationary and it stays the same and that is what we have with the schmidt cassegrain the position of the uh, eyepiece more or less stays the same because it's just pivoting on this uh, axis up and down slightly not much you can just sit the same height and look at the most of the object so it's easier Another difference is that the size of the Newtonian, when this is the same for the Dobsonian, is about uh, twice the size of a Schmidt Cassegrain, of similar size. And uh, that makes the Schmidt Cassegrain quite compact. Although it has a bigger focal length, that's 2000 millimeter, two meter focal length it has. That one has one meter focal length. But because it has several reflections back and forth, the tube is more compact. So the size is a difference, another difference. Another difference between them is that the price for this, I uh, bought it second hand, so if you buy it second hand, at least 1,000 pounds, around $1,500. That one second hand, about around 200 
pound, which uh, makes it around $200. And uh, that's the difference. So the price difference is about five times. This one is more expensive than that. So with $300, you can buy this. $1,500 for this. Transport of this is easier than that also. It's more compact, takes less space when you want to store it in the home. That's the consideration. Or in the car if you want to take it to somewhere dark site for observation. Uh, of course you can use a focal reducer with this. Focal reducer is the reverse of a Barlow. When you attach it, it actually in increases uh, or decreases, yeah, increases the, yeah, decreases the full F ratio. So practically, uh, focal reduces for celestrone or mid 6.0.6 treat, and uh, will make the field of view wider. So that makes it practically like that one, a wide field telescope. If you use it on this, which is a reverse of a Barlow practically, instead of magnifying it, just reduces magnification. You will be able to find bigger targets in the sky, like most of the deepest, deepest sky objects. You must know that galaxies and the star clusters and everything else are quite huge, although they are so far from us. Compared to moon and the planets, they're huge. Andromeda galaxy is the, in the outer sky is almost four degrees. That makes it eight times the size of the moon in our sky. So practically a huge object, even though that's two million light years away. So you have all this uh, available with this when you use a focal reducer. You, of course, uh, the field of view again, you need a bigger field of view if you want to use the see something the whole width of the uh, Andromeda galaxy binoculars probably do it better uh, another consideration for when you want to consider buying this is that that one doesn't have any electronics it's cheaper it doesn't break this one has electronics they easily break or they become obsolete and uh, in this case there's capacitors of this one the classic uh, Emid LX200 EMC, the capacitors easily burst after a while, so you have to replace them or, or, or just use it as altazimuth without any electronics. So they're, they're prone to being outdated, obsolete, or uh, break down. That one is just mechanical, nothing there, and then the rest of it is optical, optical tube, and there is no danger of that. Another thing that may confuse you is that, as you have seen in the video I presented you, the image uh, in this one compared to this one is reversed. <laughs> this reverses the image compared to the normal viewing that one even swaps sweeps that image to the mirror part of it so practically you will see even another image which is not the same as what you can see with your normal eye and is a reverse uh, <laughs> it's very interesting thing when you look at the moon from this two to these two objects you have to use different maps for this if you want to be comfortable finding objects and the names of the targets okay one of the things that you can do with both of them is astrophotography with this one you can do you know digiscoping hold your mobile camera mobile phone and uh, take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on the video or photo uh, of uh, celestial objects, including planetary objects. With this one, you can guide it. So most of the instruments can be guided unless they're broken. So when you can guide the telescope, practically you can take up to 10, 15 uh, minutes of the guided astrophotography. Unfortunately, you will have some field rotation because this is moving in altazimuth. It's moving like this, a little bit like this, a little bit like this, a little bit like this. Is not a equatorial that follows in a curve. It has to follow the curve in steps like that. 
so and this causes field rotation when you have field rotation your image at the center looks uh, centered around it object look, look appearing as if they've rotated it's like as if they, you're looking at the polaris and the stars around it but with the video and other things you can just take a short videos and just add them stack them with the software that will be you will be able to do that with a um, um, focal reducer you can have a wider field of view and just do whatever you want to do planetary you don't have any problem you can just take the pictures and or the moon the same and uh, I, I don't do any processing I can photograph with all of them. I do some astrophotography also of the brightest objects like Orion Nebula and uh, things like that. So this is the moon. I'm holding the camera against the eyepiece. Uh, it's a Scott Watcher 28mm 2 inch eyepiece on a Scott Watcher 200p. It's a Newtonian, the same as the uh, is f5 focal ratio of 5 the same as a, a skull watcher or orion or similar to that uh, dobsonians okay this is with the midi schmidt cassie grain as you can see uh, i showed you during the daylight now we are looking through the night or twilight and uh, you can see the image uh, scale is larger uh, the eyepiece is the same just because it has a higher f ratio you can see more of the object and less of the sky background that means that it is a narrow field of view uh, good for planetary viewing not very good for deeper sky objects but you can use a focal reducer and uh, it's a reverse barlow practically makes it suitable for using uh, as a wide wide field uh, telescope Um, I cannot say which of the, the, them I prefer, they are different in what they do and as you can see I have both of them so you can make your own judgment based on that. But if I was going to buy the first telescope and I did, was not sure that I wanted to dedicate more time and resources to this, I'll probably go for the Skywatch and Newtonian. Then when I see that I'm more interested, let me just get the Schmidt-Kastrick and if I want.